Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 2, Lesson 6 on finding a fraction of a whole. This is an amazingly important topic because there are so many times in life when you'll hear something like, well, two-thirds of the students went on the field trip. Or, you know, four-ninths of the class uh, brought their calculators today. Right? And when we're doing that, when we're talking about two-thirds of this or four-ninths of that, we're really talking about multiplication. And specifically, multiplying a whole, like the number of kids in a class or, you know, whatever, by a fraction. Now, the last lesson, we multiplied a fraction by a whole number. In today's lesson, almost exclusively, we're going to be multiplying whole numbers by fractions. All right? Now, let's start, though, by reviewing what we saw in the last lesson. Exercise number one. Victor takes strides that are three and one quarter feet long. If he takes five of these strides, what is the total distance he travels? Show your work and express your answer as a mixed number. All right, well, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can figure out how far or the total distance that Victor travels. All right, well, let's do it. The plain fact is, right, Victor travels five times three and one quarter. Now, what is five times three and one quarter? Well, that's five times three feet plus a quarter of a foot. We can use the distributive property of multiplication. Five times three gives me 15. And five times one quarter is literally just five quarters, right? Now, what is five quarters? Well, five quarters is the mixed number one and one quarter. So 15 plus one and one quarter must be 16 and one quarter feet. All right. Multiplying a fractional quantity by a whole number. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip that question on its head and start to multiply whole numbers by fractions. Let's take a look at that in the next exercise. Now again, this is really important work to understand. You know, we're going to be looking at a lot of stuff like this when we get into proportional reasoning, ratios, work with percent, percent work later on in this course. So try your best to understand what we're doing today. Exercise number two. Latanya goes apple picking and picks 35 apples. She gives three-fifths of the apples away because quite frankly, 35 apples is a lot of apples. No one's gonna eat that many apples. Letter A, write a product that would give three-fifths of the 35 apples, don't evaluate it. All right, so one thing that's really important about stuff like this is when you see a statement like three-fifths of 35, you recognize that what that means is three-fifths times 35. Right? So 3 fifths of 35 is 3 fifths times 35. Now letter B says, fill in the tape diagram to help determine the value of the product in A. What two operations do you have to do? So let, let's talk about this a little bit, right? The idea behind this tape diagram is to help us visualize what's going on. The entire length of the tape diagram is supposed to represent the 35 apples. And what I've done is I've broken it up into five equal sections. Why? Because Latanya is giving away three-fifths of the total apples. So these three boxes here represent the three out of the five boxes that she's going to give away. What I'd like you to do is take a moment now to see if you can figure out what those three-fifths represent in terms of the number of apples. Pause the video now and see if you can figure this out. Well, it's almost like LaTanya took five buckets and sat them in front of herself, and then she put an equal number of apples in each bucket. Well, how many apples will be in each one of these buckets? Well, for that, right, we would have to do 35 divided by 5, and that would give us 7, right? So, like, literally, we'd have 7 apples, 7 apples, 7 apples, 7 apples, and 7 apples. Now, what do each one of those sevens represent? Well, they represent one-fifth of the 35. 
but we want three-fifths of the 35, right? We want this. So that means we're going to have 3 times 7, or 21. So 3 fifths times 35 is 21. And notice, the two operations we did is we did division. Make that look a little bit more like a division. Simple. We divided the 35 by 5. What did that give us? It gave us 1 fifth of 35. And then we multiplied by 3, so that that would give us 3 fifths of 35. And that is the thrust of everything that we do today. When we multiply a whole quantity, it doesn't have to be a whole number, but when we multiply a whole quantity by a fraction, we first divide the whole quantity to find that base unit, one-fifth of 35, which is 7, and then we multiply by 3. Okay, let's keep working with this to make sure you understand the idea. Exercise number three. For each of the following products, fill in the tape diagram that helps to visualize and evaluate the product. All right, so easy enough. In letter A, I'm trying to find 2 thirds times 18. In letter B, I'm trying to find 5 6 times 48. The idea here, let's do letter A together, is that this entire diagram represents 18, right? And this portion of it represents 2 thirds times 18. Well, if I do 18 divided by 3, right, maybe use the fraction bar to make it easier, I find that each one of these has 6 inside of it. So, of course, then 2 times 6 gives me 12. So 2 thirds of 18 must be equal to 12. See if you can use this idea to figure out what 5 6 of 48 is. All right, well, it's simple enough, right? The first thing I want to do is figure out what 1 6 of 48 is. Since all of this represents 48, I can do 48 divided by 6, and I get 8. Each one of these is equal to 8. 1 6 of 48 is equal to 8. But I have 5 of them, right? So 5 times 8, well, that gives me 40. So 5 6 of 48 is 40. Simple enough. Let's keep working on this. Exercise number four. In Yvette's class, the number of left-handed students is two ninths the number of right-handed students. If there are 18 right-handed students, how many total students are there? All right, now there's a little bit more involved, right? So pause the video now and see if you can use what we've been talking about to figure out the answer to this problem. All right, let's do it. Well, we know that we have 18 right-handed students, and we know that the number of left-handed students is 2 ninths the number of right-handed students. So this product will give us the number of left-handed students. I'm sorry, not 2 thirds, 2 ninths. Now, how do I really want to think about this? Well, I really want to think about it, just like I've been doing, by first finding 1 ninth of 18 and then multiplying it by 2. Well, 1 ninth of 18 is equal to 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. There are 4 left-handed students. Now this problem asks me for the total number of students. That's going to be 18 plus 4. So they're going to be 22 total students. All right. Again, very simple idea. To find 2 ninths of 18, I first find 1 ninth of 18. And of course, I do that by division. 1 ninth times 18 is simply what I get when I divide 18 up into 9 groups. Each of those groups have 2 in it, in this case 2 students. I then have 2 times 2, and that gives me 4 left-handed students. When I add the 4 to the 18, that gives me my final answer of 22 total. All right, let's keep moving along on this. I like it. Now, 
I want to explore before we move on an important property of multiplication that you've seen before. Let's take a look at exercise 5. Consider the products 2 fifths times 15 and 15 times 2 fifths. Find both products showing your steps along the way. And then what do we notice? All right, let's do these together because I, I really want you to think about them very differently. I do. 2 fifths times 15, I want you to really think about this as 2 times 1 fifth of 15, right? Now 1 fifth of 15 is 3 because it's just 15 divided by 5. And then of course 2 threes would be equal to 6. On the other hand, 15 times 2 fifths, this is what we did actually in the last lesson. If I have 15 times 2 of anything, I have 30 of those things. So in this one, I've got 30 fifths, which is the same as 30 divided by 5, and that's also equal to 6. Well, what do I notice? They are the same. Now, this is a remarkable, remarkable property about multiplication. When you multiply two numbers together, no matter what kind of numbers they are, whole numbers, fractions, one's a fraction, one's a whole number, it doesn't matter, the result is always the same. Now again, I interpret these two very differently. To me, this is 2 fifths of 15. This is 15 of the number 2 fifths. It's like 2 fifths plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths. Very, very different from this one. And yet, the results are the same because the multiplication has what's known as the commutative, big word, commutative property. 3 times 4, 4 times 3, same thing. 1 half times 10, 10 times 1 half, same thing. Now, why do we need that? Well, let's take a look at the next set of exercises. All right. So why we need that is for problems like number 6. Let's take a look. Find each of the following products by doing the multiplication first. Reduce your answers to simplest terms and write as a mixed number if, as needed. So here's why we wanted to talk about the commutative property of multiplication. If I want to find 7 6 times 9, you know, so far in this lesson I've been saying to you, oh, what I'd really like you to do is I'd really like you to think about this as 7 times 1 6 times 9. And you certainly can do that. The problem is 9 is not divisible by 6. It just isn't. If this was 7 thirds times 9, everything's awesome. But 6 does not divide into 9 nicely. So this is not a great way of doing this problem. On the other hand, on the other hand, because multiplication is commutative, I can actually say that this is the same as 9 times 7 sixths. And then I can use what I learned in the previous lesson to say, ah, oh, that's 63rd sixth. And now I can reduce that now to simplest terms by dividing um, by 3 in both cases. That will give me 21 halves. 2 goes into 21 10 times with a remainder of 1. So it gives me 10 and a half. So in each one of these cases, the idea is 10 is not nicely divisible by 4. 4 is certainly not nicely divisible by 5, and 12 is not nicely divisible by 8. And yet we can flip-flop the order of the multiplication and then multiply the way that we've done in, previous, in the previous lesson. Let's do one more of these together and then have you do C and D on your own. So again, 3 fourths times 10, which would literally be 3 fourths of 10, I can rewrite as 10 times 3 fourths. But then I know that 10 times 3 fourths must be 30 fourths, which I can simplify by dividing numerator and denominator by 2. That'll give me 15 halves. And now 2 goes into 15 7 times with a remainder of 1, so I get 7 and 1 half. All right. What I'd like you to do is pause the video now, take a shot at letter C and letter D, and then we'll go through them. All right, let's do it. So 6 fifths times 4 
is going to be the same as 4 times 6 fifths. 4 of 6 of anything is 24, so it's got to be 24 fifths. No kind of simplification here so much, we're just going to turn it into a mixed number. 5 goes into 24 4 times with a remainder of 4, so we get 4 and 4 fifths. 3 eighths times 12, that's going to be the same as 12 times 3 eighths. 12 times 3 is 36 eighths. Um, I can divide both numerator and denominator by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 9 halves converts into 4 and 1 half. All right, that's it. Now again, I'd love for you to be able to think of these as, what is 1 sixth of 9, and then I'll multiply by 7. It's just that 1 sixth of 9 is not a nice number, right? Same thing here. What's 1 fourth of 10, you know, 1 fifth of 4, just not a nice number. If it is, then I recommend doing it that way. But here, we really flip-flop the order of that multiplication, and then we do it like we did it in the last lesson. Okay, let's look at one more problem. Exercise number seven. Derek is cutting a board that is 10 feet long. He needs only 3 eighths of the board's length. Create a product that finds out how long of a board Derek needs, and then find the length in simplest form as a mixed number. All right, I'd like you to try this problem, and then we'll take a look at the answer. All right, Derek's got this 10-foot board. He needs only 3 eighths of the board. So literally, Derek wants this calculation, 3 eighths times 10. He really wants to divide the board, this 10-foot board, up into 8 equal-sized pieces, and then take three of them. The problem is, how long is 10 divided by 8? And you can figure that out, right? But it's just not very convenient. On the other hand, we can use the commutative property of multiplication to rewrite this as 10 times 3 eighths. That will then be 30 eighths, which if I divide the top and the bottom by 2, maybe put a 2 there as well, will give me 15 fourths. And now I can write this as a mixed number. 4 goes into 15 three times, giving me 12. And then I have 3 left over. So Derek needs 3 and 3 fourths of a foot of this 10 foot board. All right, let's wrap it up. Today, we looked at finding the fraction of a whole. And generally speaking, what we want to be able to do is if we're finding, let's say, two-fifths of a whole, we really would like to find one-fifth of a whole by dividing the whole by five, and then multiplying that result by two, if that's possible, because that's the best way to think about it. If we can't do that because the whole isn't nicely divisible by five or four or three or seven or whatever, then we can always flip the order of multiplication and use what we already know. All right, we're going to be using what we learned today a lot, a lot, a lot in almost all aspects of the course moving forward. So make sure to nail down the homework as well as you can. For now, I want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.